My latest research has been on the Islamic terror group called Boko Haram. The name is often translated as Western education is sin or Western education is forbidden. And that's certainly one aspect of the group. Their signature tactic has been the abduction and sexual slavery of schoolgirls. But the group goes beyond that. For example, attacking government and military uh, installations, attacking civilians and anyone who opposes their ideology. They have for a long time wanted to establish an Islamic state in northern Nigeria that breaks completely with any form of democratic or civilian governance. They announced an alliance or partnership with the Islamic State in 2015 and um, have since at least part of Boko Haram has become a franchise of the Islamic State movement. My research on Boko Haram has focused on the drivers of violence. That is, why Boko Haram operates in the way it does. Why did the movement turn from a broadly non-violent social movement to a violent terroristic movement? And my research has found that there are a number of drivers to this violence. Ideology is certainly an important one, but ideology is not the be-all and end of the movement. So for example, you have other factors such as grievances around corruption. Nigeria is seen as a very corrupt state. Um, nepotism, mismanagement of the government, state brutality, fear of the police and the military among some of the civilian population. The movement is also very much opposed to Western forms of government and Western culture. In the case of Nigeria, it's very important that Boko Haram is engaged in a military way through the use of force, but that alone will not solve the problem. The Nigerian government will have to do uh, a systemic reform in the country, including reducing the huge levels of corruption, government inefficiency, and address many of the grievances that the um, population in some parts of the country have in terms of feeling unrepresented, um, that their vote doesn't matter, that the police and the military are not on their side. So if Nigeria can address these problems, it will reduce the impact that violent movements such as Boko Haram have. But of course it's also important to engage with these groups in terms of delegitimizing their ideology and showing that even within an Islamic framework, uh, violent action is not the best course of action, that it is not legitimate within the Islamic framework. Boko Haram may very well be a victim of its own extremism, that the movement's tendency to attack all those who do not agree with the movement's view, um, and that includes other Muslims. So when that happens and movements start to split, it could be the undoing of a movement like that because they no longer have unity.